Take a time, take a time, take a time. No I'm at University of West Indies live on Bob Arts Television. I'm sitting, standing here. Uh, Roger Steffen, how are you doing? I'm fine, Astro. It's nice to see you when it's not snow and it's 10 degrees below zero. The rest of all right. <laughs> you know, um, Roger, we are in Reggae Month, February 2015, and Roger is scheduled to talk here at University of West Indies. What are you going to talk about? Well, I'll give you one guess, and its initials are BM. <laughs> Bob Marley. And yes, I. All right. BMW. You're going to do the whalers. Bob Marley and the whalers. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the annual Bob Marley lecture. And I stand in awe of the people who were here before me Cindy Breakspear and uh, Skill Cole, Dr. Matthew Smith, who I have enormous respect for. And uh, I'm going to be previewing my forthcoming book. It's my seventh book on the history of reggae and uh, Bob Marley. And it's going to be called So Much Things to Say. Whoa. The Oral History of Bob Marley. A hundred interviews with him and the people closest to him that I've conducted over the past 36 years. And I've been working on this book since 2002. And uh, it's other people's memories of Bob. It's not you know, the Timothy White nonsense okay. where he's making up conversations between Bob and Rita in bed and all of that. It's the people who knew Bob, who lived with Bob, worked with Bob, telling their stories in their own words. And as, I'm, I'm giving you a real preview because I'm going to say a lot of this today. Um, there are no facts in Jamaica, only versions. True. Right? Yep. Yeah. So you're going to hear a lot of versions of the same thing by people who were all in the same room at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. With the most vastly contradictory memories. So the subtext of my, my talk tonight is questions for future historians. I remember visiting your house out there in LA. Oh, you won't believe what happened I, to it. I've never seen so many memorabilias of Bob Marley. What happened to it? Well, you know what? It has tripled in size since Whoa. you were there. We had to move twice to house the collection. Our new house, I have now succeeded in filling. I just took over the last of the downstairs seven rooms. We used to have a guest room. Now it's the reggae vault. And it's seven rooms, floor to ceiling, of over 300,000 items from the history of reggae. And I also want to correct the misapprehension that a lot of Jamaicans have about it. It is not the Bob Marley archive. Okay. It is the history of the Jamaican bridge. music going all the way back to Count Ossie and the Folks Brothers with O Carolina. 90% of what I have preserved is other people. But of course, the, 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 the prow of the icebreaker of reggae is Bob Marley. Yes, yes, and, yes. And uh, the most crucial artist, and that's probably the largest collection of Marley memorabilia and autographed records in, in the world, according to his band. Yes, yes. And they've met all their fans all see, over the world, see, you know, see, five see. times at least. Yeah, man. And uh, they tell me that. So. Sure. I don't mean to be immodest, but in fact, I keep hoping there's somebody else out there who has all this stuff I don't have. You yeah, know? so you can get some more. Yeah, man. That's true. <laughs> um, would you say reggae music is indigenous to Jamaica? It was indigenous to Jamaica, and now some of the most significant reggae in the world is being made in other countries. It is other countries, truly, that are keeping the roots alive, because the, the kind of music most people want to emulate in other countries is the roots Rasta Nyabingi style of music, the music uh, that is the rhythm of resistance. So that I've been in, in New Zealand where there was a band called Herbs made up of Maori, Samoans and Tongans who didn't normally get along too well together and uh, they formed a protest band to complain about the conditions in New Zealand they're called Herbs. Another one called Unity Pacific, whose leader is from the island of Niue. Uh, Aboriginal bands. Yes. No fixed address. A great name for an true, Aboriginal true. band. And they make they made protest music in the outback of Australia. Do uh, you think they would have adopted a name like that because they play in Rastafari indigenous music? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, you know, reggae has the capaciousness to adapt to a whole lot of different styles of music. Mm -hmm. Bob was experimenting with jazz and with bossa nova before he passed away. Mm -hmm. That's unreleased material that I have in my collection. And um, 
But that wouldn't be reggae though. That would be a bossa nova and rhythm and blues. You can't yeah. really call but, it. But a, a Jamaican artist can play jazz and rhythm and blues. Doesn't make it reggae. It doesn't no. make it reggae. But if you have and that likewise, heartbeat underneath it, yeah, but if that the, heartbeat rhythm is there, yeah. you can put touches and flourishes yeah, over yeah, yeah. it. But the heartbeat is coming from the indigenous Jamaican who come, the music come from the belly of us, not somebody jumping up on stage and say they're playing reggae and people believe them true, true. that they're playing reggae. Yeah. And yeah. We, we, right now the people are being fooled that they're playing, that they're listening to reggae. Yeah. They're not hearing well, reggae. But, but Astor, there are an awful lot of reggae fans in France in England, yeah, in, the, in the, Italy, the, in Germany. I talked to Ellen and Peter from Rhythm Magazine. Yes, yes. Every issue features people playing some roots in, reggae some, in yeah, Germany. Something, uh, there's something not indigenous to them. No, but they've adapted it. Yeah, And, adapt, and they've used they, the classic yeah. rhythm of reggae mm -hmm. to make their protest music and to right make now, spiritual statements. Yeah. I have no objection yeah, to that you, because you they're would, keeping uh, the music alive. Yeah, but we are too. Yeah. But the only thing with us in Jamaica, mm -hmm. We don't have the, the big people who own the radio stations who will play black music. Isn't that amazing? Because when we first started coming here for Sun Splash 81, I first came here in 76, there was no radio, radio on the radio. I, we got out of the airplane in, in uh, June of 76 in Montego Bay. They were playing Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. And Michael and, Jackson. But worse, the first song I heard when I got into the airport was... Um, if you're going to San Francisco, yeah. wear some flowers in your hair. And I said, why did I fly all this? Way? I know, man. It, it blows. And now you've got, what, 20 radio stations and a lot of micro stations, and, and hardly any of them are yeah. really playing the roots. Yeah. We, that Maxi, and, uh, yeah. Maxi Romeo talked about that yesterday at his seminar. Yeah. Is that why you think reggae music is moving away from Jamaica and some people jumping up on stage and playing something and said they're playing reggae? You think that's why? Because we are not keeping it ours, somebody is taking it and says, yeah, like a, it's a ledge that people even say that reggae is too big for a little island like Jamaica. Yeah. It's like Blue Mountain coffee is too good for Jamaica. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with those people at all. But, um, you know, you're hammering away at this point over and over again. I don't think we should uh, resent other people playing taking something, the form. Playing, playing something like reggae. Not something like reggae, Astor. Reggae. Yeah. Dub. Reggae. Roots reggae music. I've been around the world yeah. five times you, and I've know, seen these Roger, bands and yeah, they are serious, they are Rastafarians, yeah, of course. they may be white or yellow, mm -hmm. or brown dreadlocks, they are keeping the roots alive, they're talking about Haile Selassie and they're playing roots music, so don't they denigrate would. their work. They would man, they yeah. would, and I, I understand, when I started reggae in Chicago, we had reggae bands from Jamaica, like um, um, Morgan Heritage's dad, mm -hmm. uh, Black Eagles, it was real reggae. Yeah. And people come out for the real reggae. Well, how so about Dalal in Chicago? Dalal is an Ethiopian, Ethiopian band. Did you consider that reggae? No, really. Ethiopia. But they play, they, they're Ethiopian trying to play reggae. Yeah. And I asked Ziggy, why did he choose them to back him up in his first Grammy mm. album? He said he wanted a different song. He wanted a song which blends the Ethiopian rhythm oh. with reggae but and you, he succeeded on that. So that was the reason why Dalo was there. No. So but you can't stop that, progress, you can't stop evolution. Reggae music is... But, but Bob would have taken the music in so many different new directions if he had stayed among us. Yeah, Anyhow, I'm being I, called I to 93. I don't so. think so, uh, but right. anyway, we'll anyway, agree to at, disagree. Look at, looking forward to your talk. And I'm going to blow some minds tonight. You're going to blow some minds? Oh, I promise right. you. Let's remind him that reggae is indigenous to Jamaica. Uh, I think there's a question. All right, go on. Respect. One love, everyone. <laughs> All right. Ja love. Roger Steffen live on Bob Arts Television. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, man. We're going to see what I'm going Every time a small island like Jamaica have something indigenous to us, there is the people who want to take it and say, it is too big for Jamaica. It is not. It's our. It's from our heartbeat. It's coming from our belly, not theirs. So let's collaborate, work together, and promote our indigenous music, Rastafari music, not their music. They love to call it theirs, but let's not keep. Let, let's not allow them to do it. Blessed love. Don't go nowhere. Let's check him out.
I said, I saw Ross Asta Black this morning on TV. The man was eloquent, clear, Winston. Winston. explicit, elegant, with knowledge One and song. wisdom. I was very proud. Very, very proud. Keep it going. Yeah. They're going to learn to see your word come to pass. <laughs>